Welcome to Bloodbath & Beyond. Today we're doing a retrospective review of Street Trash. New York City is going down the toilet. Directed by J. Michael Moreau and starring Mike Lackey, Bill Chappell, Vic Noto, and Jane Arakawa. This is a movie about a lazy shop owner who is running out of booze. He finds some old toxic booze in the walls and he starts selling it to homeless people. What could go wrong? This is a retrospective, so we are going to be talking full spoilers. And this is kind of one of those movies that you just kind of need to talk through. So this is going to probably be a lot more disjointed than our usual reviews. Strap in. You had 34 years to watch this movie, and you did. So what do we like? The gore was the best part. And probably what most people even know this movie for because when people drink Viper, this toxic liquor this guy finds, they just start melting. They turn into pieces of goo, and it's just like bright yellow or purple or blue. Like there's just different colors, and it looks really cool. The standout and the poster boy is our toilet man. Uh, I feel bad for him. He tried to flush himself. I don't know why he tried to do that, but he did. Hello, it's me, Onyx McFly, uh, or uh, Marty McFortuitous. I don't know. And I'm here, back from the future, to tell you that if you like street trash and other goo-based films, that there's no films like it in the future. But you can help. Go to onyxthemovie.com and back my film, my goo-based feature, called Onyx the Fortuitous and the Talisman of Souls, and help save goo-based filmmaking. I know Bloodbath and Beyond likes goo-based movies, and you should too. So back my film today, before it's too late! The soundtrack was very 80s and fun. I like Burke. Burke's the homeless guy who walks into like the, the supermarket. He's got a gas mask. Oh, yeah. And he starts just stuffing his pants with all types of food. This is genius. We learned the same trick when we watched the movie Kids. So shout out to kids for teaching us how to steal 40s. He's stealing food and it's hilarious because he's just such a great character and when he gets caught, he goes on this amazing little like monologue and goes through this argument and it's fantastic. I'd like to know what you're doing with all that chicken in your pants. Say what? You heard me. Well, yeah, I heard you, but I don't understand. He was just a really good character. Everything he said, even when he met up with Fred, our main lead. You look too goddamn comfortable. People ain't gonna pity you no more. Who's the, the most suave looking bum I've ever seen or homeless He had guy. a very cool hat. What would that hat look like, like out of bum context? It was like, it's almost like a pimp hat. It's like they make it for bums and pimps, okay. It's like you got a big wobbly looking piece of burgundy. I also like the sets. There's not a lot going on in this movie, but we do spend a lot of time in the junkyard where a lot of the homeless people roam and live, despite the signs that say, no homeless people allowed, or no bums allowed. There's a junkyard throne with some Hulk looking guy, and we've got a big tire fortress where Fred and his little brother Kevin live. The good guys. The good guys, kind of. Well, I mean, Fred, our main lead, did that girl. You're so horny. All right. Oh, don't get that on me. I want you all the way in me. I don't even know if we can say this. I might blank this word out. Probably won't even you talk too. about this whole thing. We, maybe. What, this is about likes anyway. What are yeah, we yeah, doing? Yeah, I don't know. I like some of the camera shots. Sometimes it was a dolly running up. I mean, I don't want to fucking argue with you here, but I think that was just like 1987 and they just didn't have anything better. Or any money, for sure. Yeah, this is kind of low budget, but they did have some kind of stunts. Well, the credits went on for quite a while, so they must have spent a few dollars on it. Let's cut the bullshit, Jay. There are not a lot of likes. What did we dislike? Let's get to the meat of the issue here. I don't understand why this is a cult film. There are four to five practical effects scenes that are that bookend the movie. And then you've it's an hour and 41 minutes. Of what? Of next to nothing. Yeah, but the story arc. Tell them about the story arc. Fred is a good hobo who has a brother. He lives in hobo town and he steals liquor. And then forget about him for a long ass time because it, he doesn't matter He's anymore. always kind of there, but he's not really, he's not, the story's not progressing. Kevin, your purpose in life isn't taking care of me, all right? I have enough problems without having to put up with your prepubescent crybaby fits. And you also have like the bad junkyard dude. He's like this nom veteran who has just taken over the junkyard and has a bunch of minions. And he's got his own issues as well as a 
a fancy bone blade. So he's got his own thing going on, which is nothing, also. It's just fucking homeless people. It turns people. out, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just hobos being hobos. Nothing that they do makes any yeah. difference to anything. That's true, which is maybe a metaphor. Uh, it's not. This viper liquor that is supposed to be like the important stuff really is only shown like four times. That isolated person will die, they blow up or they melt, and that's it. And yeah, so- but obviously somebody put it there for a reason though, right, Jay? Right, who was it? Where did it come from? Why was that guy selling these bottles for only a dollar? I thought you just usually try to make more money than that. Why did he decide to move a bunch of crates out of the way and be like, oh, what's behind here? And he made it front and center in the display and then sold it for cheap. And I understand that it's just like, ah, oh, you know, it's just 80 stuff, fuck okay. it. Okay, so right, pretend we it. don't have a backstory for that. Why did we even meet Wendy Nightingale? who is the girl who works at the junkyard, who is like sexually assaulted by her boss all the time. Neither of those people matter whatsoever. Yep, they're just completely tangential characters. Okay. So she didn't really do anything except have some kind of relationship with this young boy. Who didn't need to be there either. Also, you know what didn't Meanwhile, need to be there? There's also the, the mobs. The mobsters, where I was going with this, exactly. Ha, ah, the Don, the Don of douchebags, that's what you are. Hey kid, I'll tell you some Nick. Nick the dick, that's what they call you behind your back, hey kid. you know. Okay, there had to be a mobster and someone against the mobster, which was just like a disgruntled doorman. And this whole thing with the cop that also didn't need to be there. Well, the cop was investigating the first kills that we saw yeah. due to the Viper. But we didn't spend too much time with him, so it didn't matter. And any time that we did see with him, he was being an asshole and not a cop. And his eyes were a little darker in every scene. Yeah, it looked like he was punched in the face multiple times or tired because he's been working on the case all night. On the beat. Why didn't he investigate the liquor store where liquor would be sold? Because he never did that. Uh, did, but did they know it was liquor? There was at minimum the toilet guy, which was first found, and then the yellow stuff dripped, which means that was two bodies. If you looked at both those bodies, there's a fucking Viper bottle that's sitting beside them. I can't do a $5 investigation on five cents worth of shit. So yeah, they're, all of the explosions and the melting scenes, they happen so far apart that it doesn't matter. There was one guy that was like kind of a mini boss. I'm shitting in my pants, Wizzy. Do what you want to Bert. He's black, no one's gonna give a shit about him. But don't drink my Viper. <laughs> Which is just another hobo that lived in the junkyard. Everyone seemed like an asshole. And so the plot is- Of which there was none. There was no plot. There wasn't a plot. Drink the booze, the booze hurts ya. Is this a PSA? Not a very good one. We're hammered. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I like the movie enough to watch at your place. Yeah, like it's fine to like throw on and talk over. Like we did a commentary oh, yeah. while we did this. Hey, we can plug it. Check out the commentary now available on Patreon. It's, right it's a blast. And we just talk about nonsense. We probably don't even have to watch movies for these commentaries. We just sit there and out. talk. It's called a podcast. Oh yeah, that's what we did. The ending came out of nowhere. Kevin just like let this CO2 or some kind of compressed oxygen tank right through the big baddie and no questions asked. It was a really cool looking shot. It was a good kill, but like, yeah, it was like, oh, is this like, is yeah. this the story arc? Like, is this like what we We care just about needed now? to like, kill the big junkyard bad he guy? He was the bad guy? Like we knew he was a bad guy, but we didn't know he was the, the only bad, bad guy. <laughs> because they're all bad guys. Also, if we just want to touch on that kill again, it's like the kill was cool, and then for some reason his body was still moving and he like looked at Wendy. <laughs> the little upskirt. The little upskirt. The movie on IMDb does say horror comedy. I would argue that this is a comedy. Oh, why your sense of humor, boy? I lost it when Wizzy kicked me in the ass. There's no overt jokes in this movie. Why would there be like this upskirt moment and he like kind of smiles or like opens his mouth? Like this is the single joke in this film. I don't really understand why this has a cult following. I am surprised to find that it did have a cult following. Is it like um, the way that the room, the room has a cult following? No, because like this isn't that bad. It's happening. like, yeah, a competent director made a decent movie with the shitty script. Let's go to our final thoughts and ratings. I can see some appreciation for certain scenes and I can understand why it could be referenced and talked about because of those one-off instances. If you were high, you might enjoy it a little bit more, but like, 
there's actually no plot. It's empty story. We don't get any backstory to this Viper stuff. It just happens to be that Fred and his kid brother take down the other junkyard man. And that is the story. The production value is fine enough and they did have a couple different stunts and the practical effects were good, but overall, it's just not worth watching. Unless it's with our commentary linked in the description below. So I'm gonna give this one game of hide the weenie out of five. Well, this movie had everything and it had nothing. It had the potential for something cool, bunch of hobos stealing stuff, getting drunk, and carrying on. It even had some cool mobster stuff peppered in. However, everyone was tangential to the plot. There was no plot at all in this movie. Nothing really happened. There was some booze. Where did it come from? Uh, the wall, I guess. There was a couple hobos. They lived in a junkyard, though, with a bunch of people that worked there. Why were they working in the junkyard? What were they doing? What was their lives like? We don't fucking know that either. It was fun enough to watch, I guess. The soundtrack was okay. The direction was fine. The acting was fine. The writing was shit. To be fair, if I wasn't getting drunk at Jay's, I would not want to watch this movie at all. So I'm going to give this movie one van full of hookers out of five. As always, thank you for watching. Like this video and comment below with your thoughts on the film if you've seen it. If you have any, you do want to check it out. Links are in the description. And if you want the opportunity to listen to a commentary of us watching it for the very first time in our lives, link is in the description to the Patreon. And if it's your first time here, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Stay up to date with everything Bloodbath and beyond. Mm -hmm.